Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sukant Das here, Consultant Nephrologist and Kidney Transplantation Physician. So today I will be talking to you or rather I will be walking you through one of the very important elements in renal transplantation and that is ABO incompatible transplantation and how we go for the most important step in desensitization. As you know, plasma is often performed as a non-specific method of removing antibodies but in our case particularly what I am going to talk to you is about the removal of antibodies or blood group specific antibodies with the help of ABO glycose or ABO columns. In our case, our patient is O blood group and our donor is, donor is A. That is why we have used uh, we have used A columns. So here we have our uh, very expert uh, technician, dialysis technician, or the most senior dialysis technicians. We have the city and we have in our state of Odessa, uh, Mr. Susil. We will uh, together we will basically walk you through. So Susil, you can. Just tell uh, our viewers about that. Uh, so, first of all, uh, hello, Mr. Ali. I think uh, you have. Uh, you're feeling comfortable? Yeah. Okay, that's very fine. And he is, uh, uh, is a smart, intelligent young man who works uh, outside India, and we want him to get back in shape so that he can go back, get back to his normal life as soon as possible. And uh, let's hope that he gets the benefit of this uh, procedure as soon as possible. So, so sir, can you just explain us? I am so sir. Uh, I am talking about uh, DA50, double nutrition, plasma therapy. So, first of all, to carry out this procedure, first blood flow is zero, blood flow is required. Uh, if there are uh, uh, contacts, uh, either we need a pump or a heavy fistula or a central line. Central line. Uh, here, uh, so uh, for blood flow, uh, contact is. Uh, so the blood comes out from the patient, the patient uh, um, through the arterial line. Arterial line. Okay. Uh, uh, here, uh, here, uh, here, uh, two, uh, two machines we are using. Yes, that is the most important part of it. Here, as you can see, you can just come and we have we are using two dialysis machines side by side. We don't need anything extra. We need two conventional dialysis machines. Okay. So the blood coming out from the patient is going to be. Uh, patient, uh, plasma filter. So mm -hmm. apart from the glycose of uh, column, what other thing we need is a plasma filter. So this is a plasma filter. This is a conventional plasma filter. Sir, two way we can do it. Either centrifugal. Yeah, we can do it centrifugal method for that blood bank also, or with the use of plasma filter. Absolutely. We are removing plasma and then we second. So what happens is that. When the patient's blood is coming into the plasma filter, so the plasma filter, as you know, can get plasma out of the patient's blood. So plasma is this plasma is not getting discarded basically. The plasma is coming through another tube, and here, here the plasma is coming. This is this is uh, this is the uh, champion of today's entire process. This is the day column. Okay. So what does it do basically? Basically. Um, uh, uh, here, uh, here it is removing uh, anti uh, antibodies. Anti uh, antibodies. Um, uh, for this, priming is most important part. Um, um, here, blood flow is just 50 ml per minute. Yeah, this is very important. Very important. Uh, you just see uh, here, blood flow is 200 ml per minute. But uh, here, the uh, second machine blood flow is 50 ml per minute. 50 ml per minute. Next, um, uh, by this process, B2 will not drop. Uh, or yeah, the patient, patient remains more hemodynamic. Hemodynamic is stable for the process. And, uh, okay. Again, so the second class will be returned for the return to the reputation uh, of the center. It will be automatically close to the patient's block. Uh, there is no uh, need of discarding the uh, plasma, so it will not be hemodynamically unstable. This is the DFTP, the filtration plasma. So, uh, okay, to summarize uh, what uh, Susil has told is basically, we need a double filtration plasma paralysis. Uh, basically, we need two dialysis machines side by side. And we need a plasma filter and we need a glycosol column. And of course, extensive tubing is required. 
So it's not very technically challenging. Any dialysis unit where you can have two dialysis machines side by side with uh, uh, the expertise of your regular dialysis technician and with the expertise of your basically uh, if you, you need to have a central line in the form of a pump cath or a central line uh, a, a, a double lumen or triple lumen dialysis catheter inserted to the jugular veins or for that matter if you have a heavy fistula. So for that matter we basically need to have certain uh, specific factors. We need to remove a certain uh, volume of the plasma. Sometimes you need to do 2.5 to 3 extensions of plasma per, per session. And what is also important is that we need the patient's hematocrit, the patient's body weight. Uh, there's a certain complicated formulas. Maybe I'll, I'll mention those formulas uh, uh, you know, when you look at the text part of my tube or presentation over here. Uh, but what is important is to be remembered is that each session of plasma, uh, each session of immunoadjunction, we are expecting a reduction of titers, almost uh, uh, four logs of titers. Suppose a person's titer with beginning is of course 128, then in, uh, in four to six hours, we will be expecting to bring it up to uh, 16, one by 16 or one by eight for that matter. In our case, uh, today we got the titers of the patient, which is IgG titers. Before starting the procedure, thankfully are one by 32. So we are just expecting it to get almost as less as 1 by 4 as possible. It, it's better if we get less than that. So I think uh, with that, uh, uh, we'll come back to you with more such presentations as of now. Thank you very much.